Hello, hello everybody. This is your practice problems video for area, circumference, sector area, and arc length. So let's go ahead and jump right into it here. All right, so for these first three problems, we're just dealing with basic area and circumference, where I'm only giving you a little bit of information and you have to use that in order to find the other things that you have to find. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that formula for circumference is 2 pi r or pi times the diameter, okay? Area is pi r squared, okay? And then the diameter is always 2 radii, okay? So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this first one and then give you a chance to try the second and the third one here. Okay. So here I'm given that the diameter is 22 inches, right? So that means this length, the whole thing from here to here is 22, right? So if I want to find the radius, I have to cut that in half, right? So 22 divided by 2 is 11. So 11 inches, okay, is my, uh, is my radius. Now for circumference, uh, I can use either one of these formulas, either 2 pi r or pi d. I'm going to go ahead and use pi d and say that this is 22 pi, right, because that's a little bit easier, right? Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator. So I'm going to do 22 times and then click my little pi symbol, press equal so that I can get the actual number here. So I got 69.12 inches, okay? And then for area, that's pi times the radius, which is 11 squared. So 11 squared is 121, so 121 pi. That would be my answer in terms of pi. Right, but then I'm going to plug that into my calculator 121 times my pi symbol. I'm going to press equals. So that is 380.13 if you round, and then my unit would be inches squared. All right. So what I want you guys to do is pause the video and try number two and number three. Number two will be very similar to how I did number one. But uh, keep in mind that for number three here, uh, I gave you the radius instead of the diameter. Okay, so finding the diameter is going to be a little bit different than what you did to go from diameter to radius here. Right? So pause the video, give these a try, and then check back with me in just a sec to see how you did. All right, folks, go ahead and check your answers against mine. So for number two, I got that the radius was eight inches. My circumference in terms of pi is 16 pi. And when you multiply that through on your calculator, you get 50.27 inches. The area is pi times eight squared, because eight is my radius. Eight squared is 64 pi, so that's my answer in terms of pi. And then I have, when I multiply that through on my calculator, um, I get 201.06 inches squared. Now, if you got decimal values that were slightly different than mine, it's probably because you used and multiplied in your calculator by the number 3.14 uh, instead of just using the pi symbol. That's okay for most problems, but you're going to get a more accurate answer if you use the pi symbol on your calculator rather than using 3.14. So like, for example, on say like delta math problems, they use the entire pi symbol rather than using 3.14 when they multiply through. So if you don't use the whole pi symbol and if your decimal is a little off, you could have done the whole problem correctly, but it would count you wrong because the decimal is a little bit off if that makes sense, okay? So my advice is to just go ahead and use the pi symbol and then round at the very end, okay? So looking at number three, this one was a little different than the other ones because I gave you the radius this time instead of giving you the diameter. So rather than cutting the diameter in half, I have to multiply the radius by two in order to get the diameter. So if the radius is 20 inches, the diameter is 40 inches. The circumference is pi times the diameter, so 40 pi 
That's my answer in terms of pi. And if I multiply that throughout my calculator, I get 125.66 inches. And then my area is pi times 20 squared. 20 squared is 400, so 400 pi is my answer in terms of pi. And then I'm multiplying that throughout my calculator, and I got 1,256.64 inches squared. All right. Okay, so let's take a look here at some of these slightly more complex problems, okay? So number four here says we have a circular plate with the circumference of 12 inches, okay? So my circumference is 12 pi inches, okay? And they wanna know what the area of the plate is, okay? Now, if you remember, in order to find the area of a circle, I use this formula, pi r squared. So I need to know what the radius is but I can figure that out using my circumference. So remember, circumference is two pi times radius. Okay, so I know that two pi radius has to equal 12 pi. Okay, so that's gonna help me figure out what my radius is. So what I'm gonna do on both sides here is divide both sides by two pi. Divide both sides by 2 pi, because that's going to cancel these things out and get the radius by itself. So pi, you can almost think about as like its own variable, right? So this is one of the reasons that I sometimes like to leave answers in terms of pi, because sometimes you can cancel the pi out and not have to multiply it through at all. So you can almost think of the pi like another variable, since I have pi on top and pi on the bottom, they're going to cancel each other out here. And so all I have left is 12 divided by two, which is six. So my radius is six inches. So now I can use that information and plug it into my area formula right here, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So my area now is pi times six squared, okay? So six squared is 36. So my answer in terms of pi is 36 pi inches squared, right? Uh, but then I'm gonna go through and multiply that in my calculator really quickly. So I'm gonna do 36 times my pi symbol, right? And I get 113 point, if you round up, it's 0.1 inches squared, okay? So that's one way that you can use circumference in order to find area. You kinda have to use your knowledge to work backwards find radius and then uh, and then use that radius that you find in the area formula. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number five, which says, what's the approximate largest circumference of a circular pond that could fit within a square walkway with sides of 30 meters? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. This is a problem where I think I'm gonna need a diagram. I'm gonna need a diagram to help me out here. Okay, so I'm gonna do my very best to draw a square. Not very well done, but they told me that I have this square walkway and all of the sides are 30, so 30 meters, right? So 30 and 30 here. And then they tell me that I have a circle that fits completely inside of it, whoops, and it should kind of hit the, the edges there. So not drawn very well by me, but you get the gist, okay? So here, we wanna find the largest possible circumference, right? So that means I want the largest possible circle to fit inside my square here, right? So I know that in order to find a circumference, I either need the radius or the diameter. But if you look, the edges of the circle hit the edges of the square, which means the diameter, which is the widest part of the circle, has to be 30 meters. So that's my diameter. Okay, so that means my circumference is 30 pi, right? Because remember, circumference is pi times the diameter, right? So again, this becomes something I got to plug this into my calculator real quick. So I'm going to do 30 times my pi symbol in the calculator. And so I got 94.25 uh, meters. So again, you'll notice 
Well, that's not an answer that I have available over here, but that's just because of rounding. So I'm gonna choose the answer that's closest, right? Because they said what's the approximate largest circumference. So my answer there is 92. All right, you guys. Okay, so for number six, we're going to get into sector area and arc length, okay? But I want you to try part A and part C on your own here, okay? Because it's just asking you to find the area and circumference of this circle, this one right here, okay? So keep in mind that your radius is nine, okay? So use that to find the area and the circumference. So pause the video, calculate those, and then check back with me to see if you are correct. All right, folks, so go ahead and check your answers here to part A and part C. Check them against mine. So my radius here is nine. I'm not gonna use the 120 yet. That's my central angle. I'll need that for parts B and D. Okay, so if I'm just finding the area of the whole circle, that's pi times nine squared, which is 81 pi. And then if I multiply that through in my calculator, I get 254.47 centimeters squared. For circumference, that's 2 pi times r. It makes more sense to use 2 pi r in this circumstance because they gave me the radius instead of the diameter. So 2 times 9 is 18. So my answer in terms of pi is 18 pi. And then if I multiply that through in my calculator, I get 56.55. Now, for part b and part d, they want us to find the area just of this shaded sector and the arc length, so the distance in centimeters from A to C, right? So I'm gonna do the area here in green and then I'll do the arc length in pink. So if you recall, the area of a sector is, n over 360 times pi r squared. Okay, so it's the whole area times this fraction, n over 360. Well, you already calculated the whole area. It's right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that and then plug in my central angle, which is 120. So I have 120 over 360 here times, and then I'm gonna use my area that I have in terms of pi, so 81 pi, okay, because that's pi r squared. So now, once you get to this step, you have two options. You can either reduce this fraction, the 120 over 360, and then multiply that by the 81, or you can just throw everything into your calculator by multiplying. So what you would do if you were just throwing everything in your calculator is you would do 120 times 81 and then whatever that big number is, divide it by 360. I'm gonna do it by reducing the fraction just so you can see where that comes from. Um, but you'll get the same exact thing if you do it in your calculator. So 120 divided by 360 120 is actually a factor of 360, so that fraction reduced is one-third, right, times 81 pi, and 81 is actually divisible by 3, right, 81 divided by 3 is 27. Right, so that's 27 pi, and then I can multiply my pi through, so 27 times my pi symbol in my calculator is 84.82, if you round, and that's centimeters squared. Now, if you just did 120 times 81 divided by 360 in your calculator, you would still end up right here at this step with 27 pi, okay? so. I want you to choose the method that makes the most sense to you. If you would prefer to reduce the fraction like I did to make your numbers a little bit smaller, you can. But if you would prefer to just plug everything into your calculator and let your calculator do the arithmetic, you can do that as well, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at arc length. 
okay? So again, if you recall, the formula is very similar. So for arc length, it's the same fraction, n over 360 times, but this time it's times the circumference formula, 2 pi r. But again, we already calculated the circumference. It's right here, so that's what I'm gonna use. So my central angle is still 120, so 120 divided by 360, and then 2 pi r, I already have it, it's right here, 18 pi. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is do the reduced fraction, so 120 divided by 360, again, that reduces to 1 third, and 18 is divisible by three, so I end up with 18 divided by 3 is 6. So this is 6 pi, right? And then I'm going to plug that into my calculator. So do 6 times my pi symbol, and I get 18.85 if you round. And then this one, the unit is just centimeters because it's a distance rather than an area. So no squared needed, OK? So there's some pretty, it's a pretty basic problem with area and circumference as well as sector area and arc length, all right? So give me just a second, I need to clear my screen. We've got a couple more problems to try out here. So give me just a sec, and clear my screen off, and then let's look at these last two problems. Um, we're not gonna do this last little bit here, that's in a different video, okay? So I'm gonna do number seven here, and then I'm gonna have you try number eight, okay? So what they tell us here for this problem is they give us an arc length. So they say my radius of this circle is eight inches and my arc length is 3.2 pi. And here they want us to find the measure in degrees of the arc, okay? Or you could think of that as the degrees of the central angle. Okay, so this is a problem where we have to work backwards. We're using the same formula, but we have to work backwards. Okay, so remember my formula is arc length equals n over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, so now in this problem, we know the radius. Okay, we know the radius is eight, and this time we know the arc length is 3.2 pi, okay? So what we're looking for here is this. This is what we don't know, our central angle, okay? So here's what this would look like with everything plugged in. So my arc length is 3.2 pi, so 3.2 pi, equals n over 360 times 2 pi times 8, okay? So I'm going to do a little bit of simplification here. So 3.2 pi equals n over 360, and then this is 16 pi, okay? So my gut instinct here is to get rid of this divided by 360, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by 360. Okay, because that's going to cancel that out. All right, so in my calculator, what I'm going to do, because I don't really want to do that in my head. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 360 times 3.2. I'm going to leave the pi where it is, because you're going to see it'll get canceled out in just a second. So 3.2 times 360 is 1,152. And then I can't forget about my pi. It's still there. Okay, so that equals, now that I've gotten rid of this division, all I'm left with is 16 pi n. Okay. Now remember that pi, just like 16, is just a number. It's a very long irrational number, but with like with lots of decimal points, but it's still just a number. So I can get rid of it by dividing it out. So I'm going to divide both sides by 16 pi. 
So if you look at what happens here, since I have a pi in the numerator and a pi in the denominator, those are going to cancel each other out. So all I have to do in my calculator is do 1,152 divided by 16. And that number is 72. So 72 degrees is the arc measurement, so the degree measurement of your arc. It's also the degree measurement of your central angle. Because remember, the arc measurement in degrees of that part of the circumference and the degree measurement of the central angle are the same. All right, you guys. So what I want you guys to do, because this is the last problem, try number eight on your own. Okay, I have this circle that's divided up evenly into six different slices. I'm telling you that there is a 12 inch diameter and I want to know the total area of the strawberry portion of the pie. So I want the area of this and this combined. All right. So pause the video, give this one a try, and check back with me in a sec to see how you did. All right, folks, so go ahead and check your answer against mine. So this one may have been a little bit tricky if you were trying to just use the formula because they didn't give you a central angle. Okay, They did give you the diameter. So my diameter is 12 which means that my radius has to be six, and I need my radius because they want me to find the area of the strawberry portion of the pie, not the arc length, right? So I wrote the formula for you right here. So this is the area of a sector formula. Now you have the radius, but you didn't have N, the central angle. But if you remember, this fraction, N over 360, is just the proportion or the fraction or the percentage of the pie that is strawberry, right? So I can get that just by looking at the drawing, right? This is divided into six even slices. Two of those slices are strawberry, so that means a third of my pie has to be strawberry. So no matter what the central angle is, this fraction, n over 360, will eventually become one third. So you don't really even need the central angle because you have the image, okay? Right, and they tell you that we have equal size slices here, right? So that's why we're allowed to do that, okay? So what I did here is I replaced n over 360 with one-third in my area equation and then solved the rest of the problem. So you have the area equals one-third pi times the radius, which is six squared. Six squared is 36, and then I did 36 divided by three and got 12, so 12 pi is my answer in terms of pi, and then 12 times pi in my calculator is 37.7, if you round, inches squared. All right, y'all, so that is it for this practice problems video. So I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.